Welcome to the chapter Reading and Analysis of Maps. This slide presents the overview of the chapter. Learning Objectives By the end of this chapter, you will be able to Explain the history of evolution of maps down the ages. Describe how maps were made at the time of colonization. Analyze the thematic maps in detail. Know the different conventional symbols used on maps. Determine how the heights of lands are represented on a map. Define the contour lines. Introduction Before entering into the chapter, follow the instructions shown on the screen. Click each tab to know more. We know. In the earlier classes, we learned about maps. There are different types of maps like physical maps, political maps, and maps which show heights, etc. Do you know how the different types of maps are designed? The differences between a map and a photograph of the same place. Let us know. A map will not show the real features of a place. A geographer uses a map to show the important features of a place like distribution of rainfall, types of soil, population, crops cultivated, etc. Photos may not give us the details of the amount of rainfall, climatic conditions, the languages spoken by people, in a particular place. Hence, all these can be shown in a map. That is why geographers make maps depending on the purpose. Thus, let us know more about reading and analysis of maps. Let us start our learning with the definition of map. Map is a visual representation of an entire area which illustrates specific and detailed features of a particular area, most frequently used to illustrate geography. Geographers use the maps to show features that are considered important like trees, population, soil types, crops grown, markets, schools, etc., which cannot be shown by a photograph. Now, let us look at the evolution of maps. Maps by Sumerians. Maps by Babylonians. Maps by Hecateus. Ptolemy world map. Al-Idrisi world map. World map according to Chinese. World map according to the Bible. Click each tab to know more. Maps by Sumerians Sumerians are the ones who brought the first human civilization to the world's history. Some of the earliest maps made by Sumerians about 4,000 years ago were imprinted on clay tablets. Their main intention in using maps was to store the records of the income obtained from the lands. Maps by Babylonians Babylonian present-day Iraq people made some of the earliest world maps. Around 2,600 years ago, the Babylonian people assumed the shape of the world to be a round disk and thus created maps as a round disk with the inner circle of map showing all the cities, mountains, villages, rivers, ocean of their places. The city of Babylon was shown in the middle. Beyond the inner circle 
was Bitter River or Saltwater Ocean in which were seven triangular islands. Maps by Hecateus Around the same time, Greek geographers named Anaximander, Hecateus of Miletus, now in Turkey, and Herodotus also prepared world maps by arranging places from east to west and north to south. Their ideas were similar to the Babylonians who believed that the earth was a round disk surrounded by ocean river. They travelled widely and noted down the details of the land, people and their histories, etc. Based on the details, they prepared maps and placed Greece in the middle of the map. They even divided the world into three main continents. They are Europe, Libya and Asia. The Greeks and the Romans were very much interested in making maps since they wanted to conquer the whole world and also wanted to carry out trade relationships with other places. For example, Alexander, who was a Greek king, wanted to conquer the whole world, came to India about 2,300 years ago. These maps were very useful to him. The Greeks tried to make maps more accurately through the use of latitudes and longitudes. The process of preparing latitude and longitude lines took almost 2,000 years to draw the correct lines. Ptolemy World Map One of the famous Greek scholars named Claudius Ptolemy contributed a lot to the analysis and design of maps in the ancient time. He prepared accurate world maps using latitudes and longitudes. World maps prepared by Ptolemy and other Greek geographers gave clear information about Europe and other neighboring countries. They also placed Greece or Rome in the central position of the map. Al Idrisi World Map Al Idrisi is the name of a famous Arab map maker who prepared a world map for his king in 1154. On his map, the legends were written in Arabic. His map showed the Eurasian continent completely with some parts of the African continent. World Map According to Chinese just like Al Idrisi, the Chinese geographers also started preparing maps for their emperors. In the Chinese map, China is placed at the center, Europe with a compressed edge and halfway round the globe, and mapping of Africa was done with respect to Indian Ocean. World Map According to the Bible The first world map which was made according to Bible is shown on the screen. The map divides the land into three continents namely Asia, Europe and Africa which are surrounded by oceans. Asia was placed at the top as it is considered the largest and the most important continent among others because it had Jerusalem, the birthplace of Jesus Christ. Moreover, Europe and Africa were shown in smaller sizes at the bottom. Maps down the ages Thus, around 1480s, the Europeans observed that the Ptolemy's books provided accurate location of places. 15th century is the time when discovery exploration and importance of maps increased to a great extent. This helped to prove that the earth was not a flat disk but a spear like a ball. Mercator Projection In the 16th century, Zeradus Mercator 1512 to 1594 
known as the father of Dutch cartography, carried out proper work on maps. His projection on maps is called Mercator projection. The maps which we use today are based on this projection. We all know that the world is like a ball and when we draw it on a paper, only the flat surface will be shown. Such representation causes distortions in the shape of continents and distances. Therefore, for the correct directions and shapes of continents, Mercator shaped a method but with distortion of sizes and directions. This method came to be known as Mercator projection. Now, let us look at the topic map making at the time of colonization. When the European power made Asia, Australia, North and South America as their colonies, they sent map makers to those places to know properly about the climate, crops, people, resources, etc. Slowly, they explored the world and prepared various maps and obtained useful information which helped the colonial powers in establishing their power. When Britishers ruled India, they started making detailed maps of the interiors of our country. To carry out the survey processes in our country, they established a department called Survey of India. At that time, James Rennell was appointed as the Surveyor General. He prepared one of the first survey-based maps of India. In the year 1802, William Lambton started one of the most important geographical surveys in the world. The survey started from Chennai in the south and ended in the Himalayas to ascertain the heights of different places. Sir George Everest concluded the survey and recognized that Mount Everest is the highest peak in the world. Note, the highest peak, Mount Everest, was named after Sir George Everest as he was the first person to measure its height. The map making was also in great demand at the time of wars. Maps were widely used during the first two world wars. The armies and the air forces used many detailed maps and maintained them secretly. Now, let us learn about thematic maps in detail. A thematic map is a type of map or chart especially designed to show a particular theme connected with a specific geographic area. These maps might represent physical, social, political, cultural, economic, sociological, agricultural or any other aspects of a city, state, region, nation or continent. The main objective of a physical map is to show landforms, water bodies like lakes, rivers and oceans and other geographical features which include mountains, deserts and lowlands as well. The political maps give information regarding countries, states, capitals, districts, mandals, etc. There also exist land use maps that show the use of lands. Suppose in a village some parts of the land is utilized for raising food, crop, while some other parts are for residential purposes. In a land use map, Different kinds of symbols, colors and patterns are used to show different purposes of land usage. The table on screen shows the color code used to represent the land cover and land use in maps. Maps can be used to show the population of continent, country or state. Population density maps are those maps which are used to show the population through shading. We first estimate the total number of people living in a place. Then we measure the area of the place and then divide the number of people by the area of the place. For example, if area of the place is 100 square kilometers, 
and 10,000 people live in it. Then the population density of the village is 100 per square kilometer. Now, let us look at the different conventional symbols used on maps. Map makers generally use their own symbols, but some symbols are used conventionally by all the map makers. In our country, the conventions used by Survey of India are followed by all the map makers. These conventional symbols are called as the topo sheets of Survey of India. Let us now see how relief features are represented on a map. Relief features are the features related to the landscape of a particular area. They include all the major physical features of the earth like mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus and islands. As heights of places cannot be represented on a flat map, a special symbol called contour or contour line is used. Contour Lines a contour line is a line joining the places with some common features. Contour lines are also called as isolines. Contour lines will be irregular in shapes depending upon the land form. If anyone wants to choose an appropriate place to set up a hospital, what kind of maps would be useful to him or her? Find out about the lives of some of the great explorers like David Livingstone, Stanley, Amundsen, etc. Find out who sponsored their expeditions and why. Can you suggest how maps can be used to plan in setting up new schools and colleges? What different kinds of maps would have to be studied? Try to identify India Arabia and Africa in the map given below. You have successfully completed the chapter Reading and Analysis of Maps.